pretty self-explanatory. Side dishes that are simple. So let's get started. So the first dish is really simple and um, well, I guess that's the point, so I better stop saying that. <laughs> uh, basically, it's lightly fried courgettes, a bit of crumbled feta, some toasted pine nuts, a bit of salt and pepper, and that's it. But it's super tasty. So the first thing you're going to do is toast some pine nuts. I love toasted pine nuts. It really brings out this gorgeous nutty flavor, um, and I think it's well worth doing. Now, you don't have to if you don't want to, but highly recommended. So I'm just putting them into a dry pan, no oil or anything. Dry pan over a medium heat. Um, don't get tempted to whack the temperature up too high because they toast really quickly and they go from delicious to little bites of charred charcoal in no time. So medium heat and then just move them around in the pan from time to time. You don't want them sitting and getting burnt on one side. I'm not going to give you exact amounts for a lot of these recipes because it's not baking, you know, having the exact amount isn't really going to make a difference. So I'm just going to give you general amounts. This is like, I don't know, a small handful, half a handful. It depends how big your hand is. So you're going to be using the same pan to cook your courgettes. So once they're toasted on all sides, just pour them out into another dish or bowl or something and set them aside. So your pan's going to go back onto the heat and this time you're going to set it to a medium high because you... You want to get your pan a little bit hotter for that initial bit of sizzle. You don't have to light fry them like this in a pan if you're trying to avoid using oils. You can put them on a tray and then pop them underneath the grill and just turn them halfway through grilling, but I just do them in a pan. So I'm just slicing up two courgettes or zucchinis or whatever you want to call them. Do one or do four, it's up to you. You might either need to do them in a bigger tray in the oven or in batches or have a few pans going at the same time. So I slice them up to about a uh, finger's thickness, and then once the pan is hot, just drizzle in a little bit of olive oil. Normally, when I fry, I use a light um, olive oil, but I kind of ran out and I didn't feel like running out to get more. So extra virgin it is. So just give that a minute or two so your olive oil heats up, and then start arranging your courgette slices in there. You should hear a sizzle as they go in. Just not enough space, damn it. <laughs> Three slices left, why? <laughs> Come back to those. So now just a very light seasoning with a bit of salt. I always use mold and sea salt. I love the texture of it. And I find it's a less, I don't, don't t tell me if I'm crazy, but I th also think it's like less salty than other salt. Um, I don't know, it's a much milder flavor and I find you can actually season a little bit more generously with it. But if you're using rock salt or table salt, especially table salt, just a little sprinkling. So get a lid on there and give it about five to seven minutes on the one side. Um, if you don't have a lid that fits your pan, this is actually a lid from a completely different pot. If you don't have one that fits, you can also just use a square of tin foil. I find the lid makes a big difference when cooking things through. Um, you can even lower your heat a little bit to a medium. But I find when you put the lid on, so long as you have that initial frying happening underneath, you get the lid on and then it starts to steam. So you don't end up with charcoal on the outside and slightly raw in the middle. So when they're nice and golden on the one side, flip them over and you're going to cook them again. So then lid back on and then give it another five or so minutes. So once they're nice and tender inside, uh, you can easily pierce them with a fork. Just don't check too often, you don't want to keep letting that heat out. But once you can easily pierce them with a fork, then they're ready to go. Just get them out onto a plate. To finish off, I'm just going to season with a little bit more salt and a bit of black pepper. And then, of course, your toasted pine nuts. Now, if you've made a few too many, like I always do, <laughs> um, put those in an airtight container and keep them for the next time you make this dish or grate on salads, or I even love them in yogurt. And then, finally, last step is just crumble on a bit of feta. That is it. Really simple, but it's so tasty. The courgette's kind of sweet. You've got the toastiness from the pine nuts and lovely salty tanginess from the feta. On to recipe number two. Warm steamed greens with a vinaigrette and some toasted seeds. This one happens to be plant-based. Again, our first step is to get the seeds toasting, just like the pine nuts. You don't have to toast them, but I promise the flavor is amazing. So dry pan and over medium heat. This was just a pre-bought seed mix. I think it's got linseed, sesame seed, pumpkin, sunflower, uh, some pine nuts, just a nice mix. 
So as they're toasting, just keep them moving around in the pan. Again, you don't want them to burn on the one side. So just let them go gently. Don't be tempted to whack up the temperature because they burn in a blink of an eye. So medium heat, a little bit of patience. They don't take too long. Basically, when the seeds pop a little bit, it's normally the pumpkin or sesame, I just move them around in the pan again. A few flyaways. You start smelling that lovely toasty smell, and then they're almost ready. A few more pops. Imagine if they turned into popcorn. <laughs> wouldn't that be cool? I suppose it wouldn't be a popcorn, it would be a pop sesame. Okay, I'll stop now. Sorry. So again, just get them out of the pan. You don't want to leave them in the pan because I'll just keep cooking from the heat. And I have no idea why I'm holding the pan so awkwardly. So we're done with the pan. So I'm just going to get a pot on the heat to start heating the bit of water at the bottom. Um, there's a steamer in the middle and, of course, lid on top. When it comes to choosing which greens you want to use, um, just try to choose things that, well, A, that you like and B, going to cook sort of at the same time. So instead of normal broccoli, go for tender stem broccoli, green beans, asparagus, um, snap peas are lovely too. Then I just trim off the ends and I get them to roughly the same length. Right, once the water's steaming, you're going to get your veggies in the steamer basket and Throw in a little bit of salt because as it steams, the steam will dissolve the salt and your vegetables will be seasoned. Tender vegetables like that, I would steam for at the most about five minutes. Normally, I check them at about three minutes just to see how they're doing. Just use a fork, give them a little stab, see if it pierces easily. If not, just carry on. But yeah, like you shouldn't need to do more than five minutes. Vegetables don't need to be cooked within an inch of their lives. You just want to get that natural sweetness out of them. And to do that, you're just getting rid of that rawness. So just steaming them enough so that they still hold themselves, like they're still firm enough, but they've lost that raw flavor. That's all you really want. And I actually find you get a few different textures within this. The green beans might still have a little bit of a crunch to them. Um, the asparagus and the broccoli will be a bit softer. So just get those into a serving dish. So now I'm doing the lazy thing, and there's nothing wrong with doing the lazy thing. I've got a ready-made French vinaigrette. Well, I don't know if it is a French vinaigrette, but it's, that's what it's called. So it's a bit of olive oil, white wine vinegar, a bit of mustard and garlic, and just drizzle that over your vegetables. There's something really great when a vinaigrette hits warm veggies. I don't know what the warmth does, but it definitely changes the flavor of the vinegars and things in that dressing. Season with a bit of salt and pepper, and then lastly, on go your toasted seeds. Just move them around a little bit to get the vinaigrette over all of them and get the seeds distributed nicely. Um, top off with a few more seeds, and that's it. Dish number two. Easy. And again, keep those extra toasted seeds for other dishes or your smoothie or your yogurt or your porridge or whatever. So that's dish number two, steamed green veggies, whatever mix you like, served warm with a tangy vinaigrette, a little bit of seasoning, and toasted seeds. So this last warm salad is a dish inspired by a Greek recipe. It's a warm potato salad with steamed baby potatoes, a good drizzling of good quality extra virgin olive oil, loads of lemon juice, salt, and a little bit of herbs just to finish it off. Get your pot with a little bit of water heating up and the steamer basket ready, and then just cut your baby potatoes in half. Again, I'm not going to give you exact amounts. It all depends on the amount of mouths you want to feed. Potatoes into the steamer basket, lid on, and just let them steam for about 10-15 minutes. Depends on the size of your potatoes. I always set a timer because I'm not great at remembering to check. Otherwise, I just end up with really mushy potatoes. You could use large potatoes for this. Um, if you do, go for a waxy potato. You don't want them to turn into absolute mush. But then just cut them up into quarters or something smaller, like bite size. I normally cook them for about 10 minutes before tasting them. I don't want them overcooked, but I don't want to keep checking every few minutes because you're just going to let all that heat escape. And they're not quite done, so I'm just going to let them steam for another three to five minutes to do it. Just going to check one more time and they're done. Perfect. So just a sharp knife, pierce one or two. If it easily pierces through, they're ready to go. So just get those out into a mixing bowl. Okay, 
So now for the flavor. Get a really good quality extra virgin olive oil and give a generous glug. Don't be stingy. And again, something happens when you pour olive oil onto a hot ingredient. I mean, you can just smell the fruitiness from the olives in it. It's just gorgeous. So generous drizzle of olive oil and a really good generous pinch of sea salt flakes. Uh, when I say a pinch, it's like maybe half a tablespoon's worth. Some black pepper and then lemon juice. This is quite a large juicy lemon, so juice from about half of it should be enough. But if your lemon is a little bit smaller, don't be afraid to put the juice from the entire lemon. And then just get everything tossed around to get everything coated. One last thing before we serve it up, some fresh parsley. This isn't necessary, you can skip this if you want to, but I love fresh parsley and I also just love the look of fresh herbs on a dish, especially when the dish is just like all beiges and browns. So there's a food styling tip for you if you've got an all brown dish that doesn't look as appetizing as maybe it could, throw in some fresh herbs. But obviously just make sure the flavors complement the dish. Last sprinkling of salt and that is done. Gorgeous baby potatoes, tangy lemon, good olive oil, salt and pepper, bit of parsley. Yes, please. I hope that's given you some inspiration for some new side dishes. And if you wanna see more, comment down below and let me know.